compositions look like and what that means as far as qualifying for the next series of the event. Yeah, first Our next stage. Our player on the bottom left representing Team Exxon. He is the red Protoss player from Denmark. It's Max Pax. And his opponent in the top right hand side of Jagannatha. It's our blue. Protoss player from Cascade Gaming. His name is Gung Fu Panda. Yay. <laughs> Well, Grant, we said we'd talk a little bit about these groups and their composition. Let's start with that first question. Number one, Grant, who is in Group B, and why is it such a scary-looking group here in DreamHack Winter EU 2020? Yeah, I mean, in terms of, of pure caliber of player, and I can't see every player wants to be game, but we have Clem, we have Showtime, we have Vanya, we have Acheron, we have Hearthstone? Yes. Yeah! Uh, so th there are really... We said there are three players at the very top. A laser, Showtime, and Clem. They are expected to go through. But the next five are fighting for arguably one predicted spot, and every one of them is capable of doing it. That's what makes it so scary, Grant, is that every single player could potentially move into that fourth spot. Now, here's how the groups work. As we take a look at these bases, we see Gunk... Well, before we go into this groups here, really quickly, looks like Max Pack's setting up for an early... Um, Early expand here. Gung Fu has blocked him off at his natural. Grant, is your camera still on, buddy? Yeah. Okay. You're just uh, stu are you stuck on Gung Fu's base right now? No. Oh I'm no, not. I wasn't following your camera. I was <laughs> I was like, hey, what's going on? I, all I saw was anyway. It's not important. Uh, it looks like Max Pax is going to take a natural as soon as this stupid pylon goes down from Gung Fu. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about these groups because it looks like standard openings here on both sides. Um, every group in the EU region is a round robin eight person group. The top, the, the bottom four players after the round robin play, the players with the four worst records are out of the tournament. They get some prize money, they get some EPT points, but they're gone. They're done mm -hmm. after this week. After this, uh, after that, the next two players, so the players in third and fourth place, do move on to the bracket stages next week, but they start in the lower bracket. So it's basically a single elimination tournament for them. The top two players in the first and second spots do move up to the upper bracket and basically they go into a double elimination tournament so hugely advantageous to be in the top two spots in your eight person group but what all these players really want as a baseline of success is that top four spots so they're guaranteed to move on to the bracket stages yeah you're completely right Creighton. this game is opening a little bit weird here um after, after i was like oh looks like pretty normal openings and yeah. then gung fu was like surprise yeah so max Pax went for a one gate expand on the low ground which is growing in prevalence uh, i was surprised to see it maybe a little bit here on jaganatha but it's cool uh, it does allow him to get his expansion a bit quicker and now max Pax, uh, uh gung fu on the other side has done everything he can to slow that quickness down so he pylon blocks then he cyber core block he's got a depth moving out con uh, constantly but max Pax, when all is said and done does have that quicker base by about 20 seconds. Uh, at the other side of the map, Gung Fu's tech is starting to really rock and roll. We see Blink coming out from Max Pax as well. Max Pax is a gateway shorter than that of his opponent, uh, and that's what he's traded off for the slightly quicker uh, attack and natural. But all, when all is said and done and it settles, work accounts are pretty similar, base is not too different. There's no massive, massive game ending mistakes from either yet. No. Looks like the Stalker might get caught actually going to drain a lot of the shield battery energy here from Max Pax. Gung Fu might get a free, if he gets a free kill here, that'd be oh, great. Bad. Oh my god, the Adepts do make it in the force field, not quite in time. Those two Adepts can make it up into the main base here for Gung Fu Banda. Oh, just one of them actually, one, one gets taken down at the front there. Good focus fire from Max Pax. Gung Fu going to get in the main base, and the Stalker's here as well. As one more Stalker pops out for Gung Fu, oh, for Max Pax rather. Nice surround of the main base, and Max Pax looks like he will stabilize here. Oh man, I don't know. This shield battery out of energy though. Gonna force more warp ins for Max Pax. And the Phoenix is now, or pardon me, the Oracle, now on the way from Gung Fu as the, uh, as the first Phoenix makes its way across the map. Yeah, and, and Phoenixes and Oracles in very low numbers are gonna be great here from Gung Fu because there isn't that many stalkers. So you lift one of them, uh, you know, you can't target down the Oracle as quickly or, um, or the Phoenix that is lifting. Um, but we do have a battery coming in here from Max Pax. He realizes the Stargate play could be uh, averse to his uh, health in this game. So he, he's now building up nice and strong here. Uh, and I don't see anyone dying immediately, which is nice. does look like we are going to stabilize into a semi-macro game. Just kidding. Don't lose, got to die. 
Man, I love PvP. The flexibility these yeah. players have, uh, not just because the, like, the build orders can be executed very well in PvP, but one small change can make such a huge difference, and PvP players now, are the, the Protoss players now, are so good at rotating their tech choices, you know? They can open up with this build that we, we as casters can watch it and say, okay, he's setting everything up to go for a Blink Stalker Immortal Timing, right? He's gonna hit it about seven minutes and then do some damage, and then on the other side of the map, he gets a block off, he loses a unit here, something changes, and, and players like Gung Fu and Max Packs are so good, they can say, you know what? Change of plans. Let's fix this. Dark Shrine coming down for Gung Fu and Max Packs, not ready for it. No Forge, no, uh, uh Robo's coming anything. down now. You see it. going to be in time? Yeah, you've seen it. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so the pylon's very far away as well here. Um, Gung Fu's not been able to get a proxy pylon close enough. DTs have to slow right. warp in. So it's going to be a while and Observer will be chronoed out. And I don't foresee Max Pax uh, getting caught too uh, unguarded from this here. Now we do have a quick affair from Gung Fu. These players are just throwing things. And when it doesn't work, they're like, it's man. Um, it's kind of cool to see. Uh, neither player is, is going to take any massive risks. As I did say, this is very much must win for both of these guys. But with Max right. Pax specifically, I feel like this is like ultra super hyper must win now grant talk to me about these two players i think most people watching know of max packs as sort of a cheeky fun yeah. you know oh he likes to cannon rush or, or or do the forward gateways he's got a whole cheese build named after him yep. how's max packs play in the mid to late game and does he stand a chance yep. against a more maybe seasoned veteran player like gung fu banda yeah i mean uh, pvp is a matchup uh, it's kind of a little bit different generally anyway um, but he's, he is very strong. He's super good. Oh, that's a nice stasis, Lord. Uh, catching four of these stalkers. But Max Pax isn't... He doesn't need to rely on gimmicks. You don't get to these kind of tournaments just relying on gimmicks. And uh, he's very young. Very, very young. Uh, so he's yeah. got that... We call it youngster energy. Where they're just like... Crazy. <laughs> like a, they're like a puppy, you know? Uh, with Blink, a lot of these stalkers should be able to get out. Max Pax is just going to try and support. Oh, he didn't Blink. With those Ooh. Oh, it was on cooldown. Strange. Really good trade, really good trade there for Gung Fu, actually. Max Pax losing mm. what two? I think if you pull up the units lost tab here, three sentries going down. Couple stalkers as well. Uh, on the retreat, uh, Max Pax not quite confident enough to really engage against Gung Fu, who does have a really good number of units. Obviously, Gung Fu's third is a little bit behind. That means yeah. he's got a couple extra stalkers coming in. Uh, most importantly, though, Grant, that plus two has already started for Gung Fu. And let me tell you, if you're in a PvP, a couple stalkers here and there isn't going to matter as much. If you're up at plus two and your opponent is only at plus one, uh, you're going to have a real bad time. Yeah, definitely. And this is a great Good. forward Good. blunk, high ground blunk here from Gung Fu. Oh my god, the Immortal. He's going to unpower the Immortal. He's going to unpower the Rover. There's all of these workers have been pulled. Where are the Stalkers, though? They're so far away. So many workers start to fall. Gung Fu has just made incredible, incredible steps in this game. To pull himself into Elite. 19 workers killed. A couple of pylons. That's a massive, massive hemorrhage of units here for Max Pax. And Grant, this is one of those beautiful things in StarCraft 2. It really does show us how, how notable the butterfly effect is in this game. Yep. Max Pack loses a couple too many stalkers on a bit of a sloppy retreat, right? Or a couple sentries and a couple extra stalkers on a really sloppy retreat. That means when he retreats to his third base, he's like, okay, I gotta protect his third base with my life now because my army's a little weaker, so his army way out of position. Gung Fu knows that, reads that very well, and I don't want to chalk it all up to, to Gung Fu being a bit more of an experienced veteran player because I know Max Pax is so good, he could have probably foreseen this coming. But Gung Fu reads the situation absolutely right and says, hey, I've got a couple more stalkers than my opponent. He's probably gonna retreat to his third base because he needs to defend that more carefully. That means his main is wide open. Blunks those stalkers in and gets some great damage done. Yeah, and I mean, the difference right now is it's very clear to see. There are 9 out of 16 workers here. This base here, fully saturated, oversaturated even. And uh, and that's with uh, the transfer going down as well. So, Gung Fu is in a great spot economically. In terms of income, you can see now that he is just going to be mining more. And when you're making the same stuff at the same, you know, with the same... Uh, all the same tools. If you have more money, you're going to do more. Uh, you're going to be more effective here. Zealot Charge is going to finish up here for Max Pax, but again, he does get a couple of his units caught here. He does have an Immortal, and that's going to be, uh, if he can keep us safe, a very, very crucial tool in making sure he doesn't get rolled over by the Stalker army of Gung Fu Banda. Yeah, and that seems to be what's what, what the more and more inevitable, or the the more and more inevitable is that the right turn of phrase? Yeah. Anyway, 
uh, the more inevitable <laughs> conclusion this game might be as three Archons start coming in, plus two is finished up. Gung Fu's got a huge timing window here to nail Max Pax to the wall. Max Pax is going to have to try and desperately defend here, and he's got a chance. The game not over yet, but it would take, honestly, at this point, even if Max Pax defends perfectly, it would take a bit of a mistake from Gung Fu, yeah. a bit of army positioning errors, maybe having those Archons trapped in the back or not getting a Guardian shield off. Uh, I think it would take a bit of a mistake right now from Gung Fu to try and defend against this. Look at that. He's hallucinating a warp prism to send into the main base uh, to maybe try and distract Max Pax a little bit or, some, or force some warp into the main. That'd be so cute. I think Max Pax may have caught a glimpse of it, but I mean the Archons. There's no answer for the Archons. Super Batteries mm -hmm. are the name of the game here. Or Super Battery, but it's going to be targeted down. The batteries have no energy, and there's too much Gung Fu band. The 67 to 35 army supply. One cannon is not going to make the difference here. Gung Fu Bando will steamroll game one and move up in this series to match point. Yeah, I, I think so. No question here. GG, there it is. <laughs> Gung Fu Banda grabbing game number one, repping Germany very well. You know, Grant, interestingly, there was a bit of a, uh, I don't know if you saw the memes going around on French StarCraft Twitter. I don't know how much of a nerd oh, you dude, are. Oh, dude, I follow it. I am. <laughs> but if you look at these results, actually, until, uh, who was it? Until Shadown lost his game yesterday, French players had not lost a series in the entire wow. tournament so far. Uh, and, and right now, Clem, uh, Denver, Marine Lord, and Shadown, and Petit Drogo, and Stefano uh, combined, oh, and uh, sorry, and DNS, all those players combined have only lost two series total this Pretty tournament. Good. Uh, the Germans have a lot of work to do with Gung Fu losing a series, Hero Marine losing a series, and Lambo and Showtime, the only Germans who are uh, so far undefeated. Yeah. Yeah, lots of <laughs> cool games coming in here. Lots of cool storylines start to build up. I, for now, though, like, you know, Grant, we, we were we were denied the Olympics this year uh, in 2020. We were supposed to have the <laughs> Make Tokyo our own. Olympics, and I feel like this gives you sort of the same vibe, where you can cheer for individual players that you know, like it doesn't matter what country you're from, you love Usain Bolt, right? He's yeah, like man. everyone. Is like, that guy's awesome. He seems nice. He's amazing. He's super super cool, right? Um, and and then uh, as, in addition to that for the olympics you sort of get all the countries like okay this country's like like south korea who's weirdly good at like fencing and wrestling and you're like what really south korea or or you know it's like all the nordic countries who somehow are great at biathlon but oh, terrible so at downhill polymer you know something like that yeah. and i feel like we're getting more of that in starcraft 2 we're like all right french players are gonna put up a really good mid-game fight but Clem's gonna show what he's up to he's sort of the leader of the band but he got more more kids coming in like there's so many great storylines here in the eu EU series. And I'm so happy that DreamHack has adopted this format. It gives us all sorts of opportunities uh, to really show off. Yeah, we, it's so nice, especially here on ESL underscore SC2B, tweet it out, tell your friends, to, to see so many of these players that maybe we see from now, every now and then in online tournaments and stuff, but you don't get to see them playing like 100% focused. You don't get to see you know, Max Packs versus Showtime every day. Maybe in an ESL weekly you'll catch it, but again, the stakes are lower. The stakes could not be higher here. This tournament alone, DreamHack Winter EU, $84,000 will be given away. And that is a lot of cheddar cheese. So, uh... It's, you're, you're absolutely right, Grant. It's like when the cows get into the marijuana patch. The stakes have never been <laughs> higher, Grant. <laughs> I get that one. Okay. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. Creighton made a joke that Grant actually laughed at. It's it's rare, kids. Mark <laughs> your calendar. I'm now. super stupid. In the top left. <laughs> Representing Team Exxon, he is trailing in the series, but we'd like to see him take it to a map three minimum. He is the red... I uh, forgot the color then. The red Protoss player. <laughs> it's Exxon. It's Exxon. It's Max Pax. <laughs> wow. This is my job. <laughs> uh, you know, Grant, I know we joke about this a lot, but it's it's kind of tough when you're a caster to make sure you say all the, the all right pieces words. of information about a player. Uh, you know, there's so much to cover. In the bottom right-hand side of Romanticide, L-E in the blue, it's our Protoss player representing Germany and Cascade Gaming. His name is Gung Fu Banda. Now, I think I'm sure I've made that joke with this joke with you before, Grant. But usually, if I do a player intro, if 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 I'm if I'm not a hundred percent focused, or if I've had a long day, yeah. or you know, if I've already been casting a lot of StarCraft, my player intros are usually like, and from Germany, it's the German Protoss player playing Protoss, representing Team Cascade. He's German, and his name <laughs> uh, from Cascade Gaming is our Protoss player. It's Gun Poopet, and like you know, yeah, it's, I do it's, it all, it's, all the time as well. You forget because there's certain. 
and this is commentary 101 inside a chat with grant and creighton we, we want to get everything in we want to get the country we want to we want to sometimes you want to like slide in they're trailing in the series you want to get the color you want to get the team you want to get the player name but you don't want to yeah. do it the same way every time right like you want to mix it up you can go the red protoss player from germany it's you want to go the german protoss player in the red you know you want to do it so it's not the same thing every time one <laughs> it keeps us sane uh, mm. and uh it, it, it adds to the show a little bit, but we do have a proxy here, at Creighton. Enough of my jabbering. No, that's all right. It's an interesting proxy pile on here, but the probe has already abandoned it, right? Yeah, so it doesn't look well. It doesn't look like unless he drops. What is this probe doing? He's got a very mm. weird movement pattern here. Is he going to drop a second forward proxy pylon and then put his tier two tech on it? Uh, this is such an unusual scouting pattern right now. I'm a little thrown off, Grant. And this is something that the Okay, he was trying to hide it, maybe, but Gung Fu sees that probe okay. coming from a weird angle and will probably get the scout out here. Gung Fu is going to see that forward pylon. But as I said, since Max Pax abandoned that pylon with his first probe, uh, the intention of that pylon is just to throw Gung Fu off his mm. game, maybe, uh, to make Gung Fu get into the main base of Max Pax, get the scout off and say, okay, there's a pylon missing. Maybe you're proxying some tech. I got to be a little more cautious back home. Gung Fu, though, already working on two stalkers, and uh, this is not yet a cause for alarm. Did he miss that pylon? Yes, he did. Now, Ooh. I think what Max Pax was trying to do there was sell the story that isn't true. You know, he was like, oh, I've come from this way. He waited for the exact moment he knew Gung Fu would move out to scout or the standard scout timing to move his probe in at a weird angle. So now Gung Fu has to get like a battery at home. Uh, he would be, I'd be mega, mega concerned if he doesn't. He's actually just getting one in the wall. Okay, to block the adepts. Uh, adepts are going to force a recall here. Uh, wow, maybe he isn't going to fall for the trickery, despite not seeing um, the proxy or the lack therefore of. Uh, wow, this is weird. There's like units everywhere in the early game. Yeah, yeah, a lot of action here. A nice little uh, shade forward there from Max Pack, being a little bit more aggressive, but Gung Fu is so good at this, man. Great rotation there, moving the Stalker forward to pick off the Adept and might trade himself out with those uh, shades going through, but I think he's going to be just fine. And there it is. Gung Fu's like, oh. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna you gonna hide a proxy somewhere on the map? Guess who can do that as well? Wow, Adept's gonna get a second stalker though if they decide to shade forward and go for it. So far, two Adepts have gone down, two probes have gone down. This is very very scrappy. They're fighting in these these weird attack baskets uh, and and trading out in, in low quantities. I think in the end of the day, the Adepts win this, right? Yeah, they do. Yeah, of course um, they do. Yeah, nice nice movement patterns are from Max Packs. Actually, moving the wounded Adepts away while he's shading all of them together. It's so good. It's so good. It feels like this fight's been going on for like 25 minutes. <laughs> it, it definitely reminds me of like the end of a Rocky movie when both of them are just like, like emptily swinging at the air, just tired yeah. and bloody. And they're like, oh, come on. This is way too much effort. This was, this was supposed to last like 10 seconds. And now we're both sort of locked into this battle. But neither player can really disengage, right? Uh, they they oh both have God, to stay Max engaged. Max. Because if you if you start to retreat from a stock or a death battle and you don't continue microing and getting those little shots off as you kite away, uh, you're gonna you're gonna take a much less efficient engagement. Cute for Max Packs there to uh, hallucinate a couple stalkers. He died. He 100% would have lost a load of stuff. If he didn't hallucinate those stalkers because he had nothing. He had four sentries as his immortals being chronoed up, and there were like three stalkers that would have walked up and just killed all of the stalkers. Um, all of the sentries even but this says two added uh, hallucinated stalkers added enough uh, pressure even though it was haluk uh here that max Pax was able to get his immortal out was, uh, was able to save his sentries i mean that is that is the very definition i think of youngster energy where you just yeah. have no fear that's a big brain play. I love it. He's going to lose a sentry very early, though, uh, darting a bit too far forward. Now, he spotted the forward pylon from Gung Fu, and he's going to pick that down, but that does mean one of his stalkers is going to be left back, or one of his adepts, rather, is going to be left back home. Uh, so we'll have even less in this attack. The Immortal going to help out an awful lot, and the Haluk Colossus trying to soak up some shots. It does soak up a few shots here, but good force fields on both sides, actually. Uh, the Immortal, oh my god, Max Pack's going to drop the Immortal forward here to try and pick off all these sentries. Wow, that's a, a really aggressive play for Max Pack. It's so good, though. The Immortal took no damage whatsoever. The Colossus gave him high ground vision up the small ramp, allowing him to hit constantly. And and Max mm -hmm. Max is he just does all of these cute little things that look so good. And you feel like when he gets his rest of his play on the on the caliber of like Showtime and stuff, he's gonna be so much fun to watch. But now we have that blink forward, gonna go for the prism. Oh. Prism does survive, and the immortal standing strong as well. Oh, the prism oh. goes down. But there's enough here, I think. Maybe Gung Fu overextending a little bit. 30 to 16 armies to play in favor of Max Pax right now, Creighton. 
Yeah, both players in a very weird spot right now. Max Pack sort of committed to that attack pretty heavily. He's gonna finish that shade with the Eden Depths. Only gonna get two kills though, diving a bit too greedily and too deep, retreating all the way back home with the rest of his army and paying the iron price there. Five Adepts gonna go down for the cost of two probes. Not worth it on the back side of that attack. Max Pack though is a little bit closer in probe than he was before that attack, but the third base already down for Gunku, who looks like he has a bit more sustainable economy. That said, Max Pax's early robo giving him pretty strong army supply, and I'm a little surprised, honestly, Grant, to see Gung Fu moving across with these stalkers. His micro is amazing, but against Immortals, it can be so difficult, just because their attack animation is a little bit more difficult, at least for me, to dodge out and to time. Yeah, there's a lot, like, if it's just one Immortal, you can blink on top of it, but two with this amount of force fields is very difficult. There's a battery here. We'll see Gung Fu disengage here and, and run home, safe to his third base here, feeling content that uh, he has that down and his opponent does not. So Gung Fu, he's just trying to buy himself a little bit more time. He's getting his upgrades ahead of his opponent. Uh, but he doesn't have Immortals. He doesn't have... He does have a Robo, uh, but he's not yet begun any Immortal production, knowing maybe it'll be a little bit difficult to catch up at this point. Uh, we do have another Adept run by here. And this one actually getting a little bit more damage, Crayon. You know, this is what's so great about Adepts. They're just so frustrating to deal with at all points in the game. Two Adepts sneak in, six probes go down. Grant, that more than anything is a testament to how strong these players are all the time. If you've ever played against a Protoss player, I don't care if you're Terran, Protoss, or Zerg, if you've ever played against a Protoss player in the ladder, you know how sneaky, how pernicious, how annoying single or even double Adepts can be. And uh, the fact that these players lose six probes to two Adepts so rarely is a yeah. testament to their skill. Yeah, these guys playing like, you know, for one, they're playing insanely quickly. I don't know how you say APM, is it A? M? M. M, there we go. Yeah, you can see average APM well in the 300s, current, went over 500 for Max Pax there for a moment. Uh, so insanely quick and efficient players. It's, it's just exciting. Starcraft never gets old. You know, 10 plus years. And I still get excited by these cute little movement patterns that they I, make. I keep getting older and it keeps staying the same age. All yeah. right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Max <laughs> <laughs> setting up for another big push here, Grant. And this time he has all the, all the elements, again, that he needs. Warp Prism, double Immortal. Uh, but Gung Fu also has a lot out here as far as Stalkers go. I like Max Pax's position. It's all going to come down to the engagement, Grant. Talk us through what's going down positioning-wise for these players. Yeah, Max Pax is trying to buy time. He's trying to get a lot of DPS down here onto the next. Nexus, he can kill the Nexus, he's in a grand position. He's mm. uh, he, he's just playing this very, very slowly, very carefully here. But now we have that big boy. There's so many Immortals though, blinking in front of all of these Immortals. Terrifying. It looks like maybe just, maybe Gungfu will have enough army supplies very even. Both players blinking to the best of their abilities. The Immortals still standing strong. Will it continue? It's already, I think he got one kill actually, not getting too many as Zealots continued to, to fight the Immortal huh? in the back here. But Gungfu has seven kills. Wow. Gung Fu holds. Yeah, Gung Fu holds. Can we just point out Max Pax was playing that really expertly, as you said, trying to get down that, that Nexus, which would, would do a couple things for him. Uh, one, it wouldn't steal any of his DPS, wouldn't run the risk of him misclicking, but also would open up the battlefield a lot more. So he'd have a little bit more space to micro, just a little bit more. But also, if you notice that fight, he actually hallucinated an immortal as mm -hmm. well to try and drop fire out. Unfortunately, he hallucinated the mortal and then didn't move his real immortal back. Yeah. Uh, so he did lose his first immortal pretty quickly. There's a second one in the backs. Uh, jostled by its neighbors, unable to uh, unable to get all of his shots off. And we can't overstate, of course, Grant. Look at the upgrades right now. Gung Fu at plus one, plus zero. We said it in the previous game. If you're in a PvP and you're behind on upgrades, it's going to be a terrible fight for you, uh, no matter how much uh, how, how much high tech you've got. Robo Bay down for Max Pax. He's going to start working his way toward Disruptors, but I'm a bit concerned right now because Gung Fu might have an opportunity to move out. His three bases are saturated. He's going for a fourth base. And now if he moves across the map and puts some pressure on Max Pax, Max Pax is not going to be able to come out and, uh, and, and pressure that fourth base. It, it might behoove Gung Fu to be a little bit more aggressive than you might otherwise think. Yeah, Gung Fu is the upgrade advantage. As you said, it can't be ignored here. But there's only one unit that really doesn't care about offensive upgrades, and that's these Disco Balls that are coming out right now. Disruptors don't require upgrades. They're pretty good on their own. Um, that's true. And with some magic hits, they are the combat condition in PvP. They are one of few that isn't too many DTs, and uh, Disruptors being the major ones that can swing the tide of a game at any moment. Um, for now, though, it is going to uh, be Gung Fu moving forward. He has a pretty healthy army, up uh, 19 army supply, quick maths. Um, wow, nice. And But his plus two is about to finish, 15 seconds away. And he's going to wait for that, and then I think he's going to hit hard in the main and in the front here. And this is going to be very difficult with any one disruptor right now for Max Pax to hold. 
You said it so well there, Grant. Only one disruptor, and that's the real problem. Disruptors get more powerful the more you have, and not linear linearly. They actually have a really, really nice synergy with each other, where if you have one disruptor, you've got to rely on a big army hit on that disruptor. That's your only hope to make that disruptor worth its while. However, oh my god, Gung Fu losing that war prism at the front, that's a huge mistake from him. Uh, and, and nice dodge to go on the disruptor shots, not a lot of the damage done there. Maxpack's holding fairly well so far. The main base pushed back, but it looks like these stalkers are going to drive him away with the super battery. Max Pax is going to stay alive, but here's the real problem. Zealots in the third base just yeah. slicing and dicing their way through these probes. And this game uh, was not over quite yet, but it's getting very close to that now, Grant. Anyway, really quickly to finish my thought, uh, the problem with disruptors is they don't scale linearly. One disruptor is not half as scary as two. And mm -hmm. once you get up to three, four, five, six disruptors, you can start using the disruptors not just for the attacks, but to zone out yes. your opponent and force them into a bad position. And that's really what Max Pax needs. And the longer the game goes on, he's going to get closer to that. I was going to say he's got a good shot if he gets up to five, six disruptors. But to be fair, Grant, uh, he's down to 50, 50 probes now. Yeah. And Gung Fu is on an extra base. Uh, this is a real uphill battle for Max Pax. I mean, yeah, plus three is on the way. It's already a quarter of the way done here for Gung Fu. And uh, I want to take a, I want you to take a magical guess at Max Pax's upgrades right now because uh, <laughs> he ain't got none. He doesn't even... He does have a forge. He just never started any, uh, which is crazy. I mean, I guess he really is going to rely purely on the DPS output. Now, there is still the opportunity. With uh, a good amount, five, six um, disruptors out, you can force the stalkers to blink into another disruptor, but it's absurdly, obscenely difficult to pull off here. And uh, actually right now, Max Pax has been caught with his pants undone a little bit because he's gonna be jumped on here by Gung Fu and there's just nothing here. Max Pax needs the recall. He's gonna kill a bunch of workers and then do that. I imagine there's no way he can base race. Yeah, I mean, a base trade would be uh, almost a foolish gesture at this point, even if even if uh, Gung Fu sacks that fourth base, but as you said, the fifth base on the way, and um, even if it comes down to, if it comes down to an army fight, Gung Fu's way ahead. If it comes down to a technical knockout with all those buildings going down, no Gung Fu's ahead. Uh, there's just no chance here for Max Pax, and I think he's doing everything he can, but really, this is looking real rough for our Danish boy, and Max Pax might go down to an 0-2 start in this tournament, Grant. Yeah, he's gonna try his best. He's gonna try his little heart out, you know. <laughs> to, to hold on here, but he is playing against an absolutely uh, devastating army of Gung Fu. And he can't even break this base, really. There's so many wow. batteries and things, and now Gung Fu is just going to be content to come home and take yeah. the fight. And as long as Gung Fu doesn't literally blink 40 stalkers into all of the disruptors, there's just no way. Finally, there was enough energy for a recall, uh, but I mean, it's now, what, four base against one? Yeah, really nice triage there by Gung Fu, by the way, warping in individual DTs and forcing disruptor balls onto the DTs because, of course, there's no detection for Max Packs. So he had to use his disruptors to take out the Dark Templar, which is a pretty, let's be honest, a pretty wrinkle brain move from Max Packs uh, to, to get those purification novas, to keep an eye on where the shimmer of the DTs are underneath the animation for a purification nova. Not an easy task for either player. Oh, Gung Fu. Um, but really, uh, the DT warp-ins from Gung Fu were so smart, stopping those disruptor balls from going down on something like, say, 37 probes, and just making sure that Gung Fu didn't have uh, any chance of slipping down into a negative position. Uh, Max Pax on the ramp here, but this is this is a huge concave from Gung Fu. Uh, yeah, I mean, the income says it all right now. 300 minerals a minute, 2,000. Disruptors come in, they get some nice shots here, but even if they kill everything, they... <laughs> come on now, wow. don't get my head up, Max Pax. No, the army supply <laughs> just too much for Gang. Uh, for Gang Fu Banda here, and Max Pax will unfortunately be forced to tap out in this game. Another good showing, but Gong Fu looking pretty good in that PvP matchup.